I'm Sylvia Clark, the Senior Project Officer for Citizen Science with the Murraylands and Riverland Landscape Board. And I'll be talking to you about how we celebrate citizen science in our region. So why do we run citizen science projects in the Murraylands and Riverland? Well, it allows us to gather broad scale environmental information, to engage directly with the community and to incorporate local and cultural knowledge. It also increases water and environmental literacy within the community to improve our policies and their effectiveness. Our citizen science vision is to have a community that is actively involved in increasing the collective understanding of the region. Now I'm just going to run through a few of the projects that we have active and then talk about why we like to celebrate. Water Watch and the Waterbug Bio Blitzes are our longest running citizen science projects and they allow the community to help us monitor the health of catchments in the region. Community provide water quality, flow and water bug data. And while our water policy team does do some monitoring, particularly through automatic gauging sites, these citizen science projects allow more monitoring sites to be added to that and also the ground truthing. It also allows community connections with that water policy. While we deal with irrigators more regularly, these are also community who live within these catchments and are also concerned with the health and the management of the catchments. It allows these people to share their knowledge and observations and we also bring in cultural connections by connecting these programs with the Aboriginal waterway assessments. Our water bug data also goes to the National Water Bug Blitz program. Other water projects that look at biodiversity include Frog Watch South Australia and also TurtleSat. We're now part of the One Million Turtles project as well. While people can use these apps opportunistically to record frogs and turtles, we're now also encouraging people to adopt environmental watering sites and to monitor them on a more regular basis. Polytelus is a project we've set up for the Regent Parrot, which is a threatened species in our region. This allows people to record their sightings of the bird and this data goes to the recovery team to help plan their recovery actions. Fungi are an important part of our ecosystems and yet we have very few records, particularly from the drier areas of our region where they pop up less frequently. We're encouraging the community to upload sightings of fungi to FungiNap through iNaturalist. We also have mallyfowl in our region, another threatened species. We have volunteers who help with regular mallyfowl monitoring. And we also have camera traps set up and we put these images onto the wildlife spotter platform on Digivol, allowing anybody across the globe to assist with our projects. These are some projects that we've been working with our sustainable agriculture team on. We had a soil acidity project where smaller landholders were provided with pH kits to test their own soil acidity levels. In exchange for the data, we also provided them with information on how to remediate any soil acidity issues that they came across. We've been running Soil Your Undies this year for the first time as a citizen science project and we've been doing this in collaboration with the University of New England and Cotton Info. Pairs of cotton underpants were provided to landholders across the region, which they've buried for eight weeks and they can use this as an indicator of their soil biological activity. And again, we give them information on how to improve this if needed. Other projects that we've got involved with are examples of like the Echidna CSI project run through the University of Adelaide. We're very keen to have any other records of echidnas from our region, so we've been promoting this project. We're encouraging people to log their sightings with Echidna CSI and also to send in any echidna scats they find. Insect Investigators Project is a new one that's just been given funding this year and we're helping to connect schools with taxonomists to describe Australia's biodiversity. Wild Orchid Watch is another one as well that we promote. 
We have threatened orchid species in our region and this project allows people to collect, record and share scientific information about orchids. Now it's time to get batty. That was the launch of the Mega Murray Darling Microbat project that was run between 2017 and 2019. We were lucky enough to receive an Australian Government Citizen Science Grant and in a partnership with the South Australian Museum, the University of South Australia and Mid Murray Landcare, we ran a broad scale bat surveys across the region using citizen scientists. The problem was we didn't really have a lot of bat information for the region and definitely didn't know about their habitat needs or conservation status. Through this project, we purchased 30 Anabax Swift recorders, which people could take home and put up on their properties. They also provided us with some habitat information through a BioCollect app or paper data sheets if they preferred. And from the call recordings, looking at the sonographs, we were able to determine which species were there. And when this was analyzed, we were able to give their landholders involved as species list for their properties. And through this project, we were able to gain so much information on bat species and their habitat needs that could not have been collected in any other way. Now that was a very quick overview of our projects and if anyone would like any more information about any of them, please contact me. Now to ensure the longevity of our citizen science program, although it has been going for many decades so far, we hope it will go decades into the future. And to make sure this happens, we really need to celebrate our success along the way. Now, I need to keep telling our board how well we're doing, but also we need to keep the community engaged to show them how much they're appreciated and what their data is contributing. We do this by reporting on our projects, making sure that the people involved know what the outcomes have been, but also the broader community as well. We run newsletters, we have a general citizen science newsletter, but also project specific newsletters if needed. For example, with the BAT project, it had its own newsletter to keep people updated as the project progressed. We publish results in community friendly documents and also in more technical documents. For example, with the Mega Murray Darling Microbat project, we had a technical report with all of the species data and the analysis that went to the Department for Environment and Water, which they were able to use for conservation status updates for the bat species. It also went to the Murray Darling Basin Authority. And with the right partners, we're able to publish in journals as well. Hot off the press for the bat project, we have a publication in the Australian Journal of Zoology. In terms of broader reach, we also have media releases and social media posts, of course. Recognising individuals that go above and beyond, as well as everyone together, uh, is really important to us. We have Citizen Science Awards for Outstanding Achievement that are given out each year. These are given to individuals, groups, and sometimes even kids who have either contributed in a huge way throughout the year or sometimes over many decades. We normally give out two or three, but the year the Mega Murray Darling Microbat project finished, we had to give out six because there were so many people who'd gone above and beyond. We had people who'd helped with the call analysis work. Some had traveled far and wide to survey sites across the region. Others took the time to move the anabats around to different parts of their property if they had a range of habitat types. And one couple also took an anabat on a houseboat trip, which provided us with four new records of a threatened species, which was amazing. These recipients uh, are given a certificate and also a book prize, and they're presented by our board members at events. Speaking of events, these are the kind of events that we've run. We've had Science on a Sunday, the Fungi Film Festival, the Mega Microbat Mozzie and Movie event, 
and this year movies and momentous achievements. You may notice I like alliteration. We run these as part of National Science Week. This allows us to apply for community grants, which help us with the cost of the events. And we also can show some of the cinema films from the Science International Film Festival. As well as the films, this is a citizen science showcase where we show the participants and also the broader community the kind of things that we've achieved through the year. We also bring in experts and policy makers that are connected with these projects to give people at the events an idea of the broader context of these projects and what they're actually contributing to. There are also social events where people can network and share their stories. In 2020, we weren't able to run a live event because of COVID. Uh, so we ended up making a short film instead about citizen science on the Coorong. And we were lucky enough to have that picked up in cinema this year. People are very important, obviously, to citizen science, but they're important to our region as well. The people who are actively involved are also involved with other people and can share their stories more widely. These people become more environmentally literate and we learn from them. They are more likely to be involved with discussions on environmental policy and to enable that policy to be more effective when it hits the ground. Thank you.